Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about fiscal policy and the crowding out effect. In this video we're going to look at one of the drawbacks of fiscal policy referred to as the crowding out effect. So this reduces the effectiveness of fiscal policy in the economy. To do that, we have two markets represented. We have a money market showing money supply and money demand on the left-hand side, and we have aggregate demand here over on the right-hand side. So aggregate demand is a downward sloping line showing a negative relationship between the price level and spending on goods and services in the economy. Now, what tends to happen here is that aggregate demand is made up of five different components of expenditure, and one of these components includes government spending. So if the government were, government were to implement what we call expansionary fiscal policy, so if they were to try expand the spending in the economy through expansionary fiscal policy, what they would do is they would increase spending and they would reduce taxes or some kind of combination of these. So expansionary fiscal policy tends to be increases in government spending or as we mentioned, tax reductions. In this case, what should happen is the aggregate demand curve should shift rightwards and we can show that shifting to the right over here in our aggregate demand model. So aggregate demand goes from AD1 over to AD2 over here on the right hand side. Now, if the government were to spend, let's say 50 billion in their expansionary package, what should happen is the aggregate demand curve should expand by at least the 50 billion. With a multiplier effect, this may be even higher. However, we know that with expansionary fiscal policy and an increase in government spending, this has a knock-on effect as shown in our economy here on the aggregate demand and hence GDP level. So aggregate demand will increase, shift rightwards because of extra spending. That increases GDP in the economy and if GDP increases in the economy, it has an effect over on the left hand side on the money market. And when output's increasing, what tends to happen is that money demand increases at the same time. Now, if money demand increases, that means that money demand shifts to the right. So as the economy grows, people are demanding higher levels of money, of cash, to purchase goods and services. So money demand shifts rightwards over here. And if the money market reaches a new equilibrium, well, what that will mean is at point B, with new increased money demand, the interest rate is going to increase. Let's say it goes up from five up to seven here. Well, with money demand increasing, and the interest rate increasing as well, what it tends to do is it tends to crowd out the private sector. So with the interest rate going up in the economy, it tends to crowd out particularly two elements, which would be consumption, households consumption, and investment in the economy as well. And because these are both a part of aggregate demand, they will tend to decrease aggregate demand. And what we mean by this is they will tend to shift it leftwards. So we have a leftward shift of aggregate demand and we can indicate that in our aggregate demand curve diagram over here by a leftward shift. So we started off at AD1. The government spent more money which pushed us out to AD2 but now because the private sector is partially crowded out, we have AD3 here. And at AD3, the aggregate demand curve has shifted back left, not to its original level, but some of the expansionary fiscal policy to 50 billion has been crowded out of the economy through reduced spending in the private sector, through reduced consumption and investment. And in this case, the increase in output is going to be less as is the increase in spending in the economy. So you mightn't see the full 50 billion 
being injected into that economy. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.